service today and you're going to help us by singing a Karen Drucker song called God is my source so please rise, rise. follow our wonderful right. song leaders and David of worship, the gift and blessing of your presence here this morning. You know, it's spirit that brings us here, really. And it's spirit that calls us to enjoy the music today, to listen deeply to the message, and to really bond in that love of fellowship. So welcome. We're going to start this morning with our ceremony of lighting the flames of faith a call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path 
of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as our practitioner, Marlene Cuckler, lights the last candle, let it represent the path which brought you here this morning. And would you please join me now in our affirmative prayer? And know as I speak these words for myself that I'm speaking them for each one of you. in this perfect, holy moment. I anchor myself in the truth that God is all there is. God is love, and God is light, knowing all things, all things that penetrate through everything that has been created. It is the creator itself which has created us. It's created us in that perfect image of itself. So today I recognize that it is a brand new baby day, a day unlike any other day that I've ever lived before. So today I clear my mind and I set a new path clear path, a path that is made by choices. So today I get to choose. I get to choose love. I get to choose a new idea that has never been thought before. And they're always coming in through my consciousness all day long. So I'm paying attention to this paying attention, recognizing that God's word is always moving through me, directing me, guiding me, showing me the way. Thank you, God, for this brand new, beautiful baby day. Thank you for this service that is taking place right now, for I know that there is an absolute, an absolute reason for each one of us being here today. A message that needs to be heard and that can open our hearts and our minds to mm, living a life, a Christ-based life. Thank you, God. Thank you as I release the power of this word into your law. I know that your law does respond in miraculous ways. And with that, I just release the word and we anchor it together by saying, and, and so, so it is. is. And now I'd like to invite Joanne to come up, practitioner Joanne, to do our affirmation and declaration principles. Okay, please join me in saying these with your mind, but feeling them with your heart, right? Okay. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being. Now and always, I believe this perfect spirit operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it. I am a empowered and brilliant being. My experience of this lies in my decision to remember, own, and enact this truth. And so it is. I believe it. You did it. Thank you so much. Please welcome.
welcome the Jewel Tone Choir. of life for Reverend Genevieve Harvey. And as in all celebrations, we learn about the person that we've been sitting with for years and years and learn what um, their accomplishments were, the good that they brought with us, with them and to us, and, um, and their, their background. And I just want to share one thing I didn't know, and it really impressed me. And that 
was um, Reverend Genevieve's daughter-in-law read, she, she did a, quite a long tribute to her mother-in-law, but she also read a thank you note. And this thank you note had come from a woman that Genevieve had met, it uh, sounded like on the beach, if I got my facts straight, on the beach and had encouraged her to get help for recovery and to go to counseling. And she was doing those things. She was sending her, and I was thinking, on any of my vacations, have I ever reached out to someone and counseled them so that they sent me a thank you note? And the answer is absolutely never. And that impressed me. It impressed me. This wasn't on, she wasn't in, you know, you were all used to her offering to pray for you here. And she did many times with many people. But that, when you're somewhere else meeting strangers and see something that could support them, show them the way to a better life, a fuller life, and to actually in, encourage that person so much that they wrote you a thank you letter. How wonderful. And here's the thing. You don't have to be a minister to do that. Every single one of you can be doing that all the time. Every single one of us is capable of seeing the truth of the person sitting in front of us, beside us, or the ones that are surrounding us, the ones that are in our space and seeing that this is an expression of the divine, just like you are, just like I am. And from that seeing, from that clear vision, then empowering that person to be their greater self, however that looks like. Um, the Reverend Judy did a wonderful job. Um, I need to, I want to acknowledge a lot of people because I haven't been here for two weeks and that feels like a lifetime for me. It feels very strange. Reverend Judy uh, facilitated the, um, officiated the memorial service because Genevieve wanted her to. And she did a magnificent job. And she did a magnificent job on Memorial Day also. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Reverend Judy. Judy. And Reverend Carla spoke for me on the 16th as I was, as I was actually writing my book which I did write, hallelujah, it'll be a Kindle, Amazon Kindle, eventually, maybe um, in the summer, because my editor isn't free until summertime, and then I will get someone else besides my staff, who are actually very good editors, to <laughs> look over, look over it. So, Reverend Carla, thank you. It was yeah. a magnificent yeah. message. Yeah. And again, I'm so glad you shared about you because then we didn't have to wait till your memorial service a hundred years from now to find out all the good that you've done and all the insights that you've had. <sighs> so living that empowered life, we want to share with you that Centers for Spiritual Living has a similar theme as ours. You remember Reverend Patty and I sat and wrote all of our talk titles, all the themes. But Coincidentally, Reverend Patty's favorite person in the whole world, the Reverend Dr. David Alt, wrote today's theme. And he had some really good things in it I want to share because it's an overlap. He was talking about, um, he was talking about his, uh, he has many charitable organizations, and this is one in Guatemala. And it's called the Kaleidoscope Kids and it's well worth looking at. And he was talking about the Samaritan consciousness and how the Samaritan consciousness, of course, the Good Samaritan and the parable that Jesus told the Good Samaritan was the one from Samaria that, of course, the, the Pharisees and the other good people wouldn't have anything to do with. So the Good Samaritan stopped, gave uh, support, to the injured person or the thirsty person. And that's the whole idea. Every one of us has a good Samaritan within us that we're capable of feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and um, providing support for the poor. 
and on to David's um, ch charity. His charity in Guatemala is particularly designed to scholarship young girls because in, in um, Guatemala, these young girls who are poor, their parents put them into factories to work from the time, instead of going to school, from in a factory, they work from 6 a.m. till 11 p.m. And of course, it's a, and the parents are paid $60 a month for that work. But the parents being poor, that $60 is important in their survival. So you can see the issue that Reverend Dr. David has and his team convincing the parents that educating these girls will be a blessing to them as well as the girls and how important that education is. And meanwhile, how important the money is to the families. So it's, he, he says in his notes about it's quite a dance because on the one hand, he can convince the girls that they want to be educated, but he can't convince the parents that they can do without that money. And then he said the most important thing. He said, there's no point in being a good Samaritan out there if you're not being a good Samaritan to the person within you, who you are. And what does that look like? How does feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, what does that have to do with being a Samaritan to yourself? <coughs> it means really looking after yourself, really telling the truth to yourself about who you are, about your needs, about the the way you live your life about your wounds. He says you take your wounds to the altar. And most of us have, been, have practiced for years covering up our wounds and hoping they'll go away. And that kind of hope doesn't work. They never go away that way. We have to look at them, we have to address them, we have to give thanks for them, and then let them go away. They're not going to go away on their own. So. The voice of empowerment is the voice of God within you. The voice of empowerment is always the voice that's saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you have that ability. Yes, yes, yes. That's the voice of empowerment. If we're listening to the voices of the world, that's the one that we want to, that we want to, embrace, and full, say yes to. The book that they're using, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not drawn to it. It's called The Republic of the Heart, and it's okay. Um, I've only skimmed it, so uh, don't take my word for it. <laughs> but there is one really good idea. He says, most people get onto the spiritual path because they're seeking. They're seeking to understand and have a greater awareness of the other dimensions of life. They're seeking for answers. They're seeking for a feeling of presence or something that they can intellectually grasp and say, yes, that's it. They're seeking. Eventually, Eventually, we, empowered voices, must have found and know and accept that what we believe is the, is the most empowering thing in the world. That's what we're called to do, to say, I know there's a power within me that's greater than I am, and I'm using it with every thought I'm thinking, with every word I'm speaking. It is moving throughout my world by bringing forth the forms in it. 
It is done unto us as we believe. We all know that. And coming from that place of powerfulness, then we know absolutely everything is perfect, just the way it is and just the way it is not. I'm rereading a Wayne Dyer book. The, the book that I'm rereading is the one, one of his earlier ones, and it's the one about seeing is believing, believing is seeing, seeing is believing. You'll see, you'll see it when you believe it. You'll see it when you believe it. Really important idea. That what we desire, when we really get who we are, who are you anyway? Who are you? That's exactly the right answer. You're God, or whatever you want to call that God word, you're that higher power, you're that creative law, you're that infinite knowingness, you are it. You are it, and I am it, we're all it. And it is forever moving through us as the things in our world. It's forever moving through us as form becoming something else, becoming exactly what we believe, exactly what we believe. I was, um, two weeks ago, I was, um, I wasn't away, I was at my computer. I was taking an online course about writing a book. How to write a book in a weekend was the name of the course, cool. and we did it. We did it because she kept, she kept pushing us. Anyone else watching Jeopardy right now? Besides me, you know what this means. No, so those would be sorry. That was the inside joke for the three people that are watching Jeopardy. There's a guy on Jeopardy that has made $2 million. Wow. And, and he's been 2.4 million. He's been on 39 days in a row. And he's a professional gambler, so this means <laughs> I'm putting it all in. And oftentimes, and he, so this, that's, <laughs> putting it all in, right? Well, that's what we should be doing in life, putting it all in. I'm all in. I have such firm conviction of who I am, what I know, that I'm not seeking anymore. I'm not looking for something outside myself. I am standing firmly in the awareness of truth that right now, I'm enough. You, each one of you, are enough. Each one of you has enough. And it doesn't matter who disagrees with you. It does not matter who disagrees with you. You are still enough. And what other people think of you is none of your business but we are so tempted. How do I know that you all are tempted to make other people's opinion your business? Because that's what I do up until now. Three magic words, up until now. Because if I can't stand in my power and know I am enough, then how can I expect and want and desire for you that you're going to stand in your power knowing that you are enough? You are enough. <coughs> You are being a good Samaritan to yourself every time you forgive yourself <coughs> for any perceived imperfections. You're being a good Samaritan to yourself when you encourage yourself to take that risk, when you encourage yourself to tell the truth, when you encourage yourself to get up and try it again, when you're willing to be that magnificent, presence of life that you are. You know, you already know, I love to read these old Science of Mind magazines that are in the 50s, and I actually brought one this morning that um, this last month, May of 1953, <coughs> was written by Raymond Charles Barker, one of our oh. favorite authors. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, that voice of authority, and he was, he was. When I, I heard him speak, and he was the authority. Mary Morrissey tells this wonderful story of how he 
stood up on the platform. She was so excited to see her, the, this guy she was so impressed with. And the first thing he did on stage was he went into his wallet and pulled out these bills. She said, looks like hundreds to her, but she could, was far away, she couldn't see. And he kissed them. <laughs> and he said, I love money. <laughs> this was her hero, and she was shrinking in her seat going, what kind of crass man is this? <laughs> and then he spoke to that, because he knew he would get a reaction like that. He said, if you don't love money, it's going to run away from you. <laughs> Number one. Number two, if I had brought a grand, my grandchild onto the platform, and I picked him up and kissed him, and I, I love this boy, I love this child, none of you would have been at all disturbed by that. So it's a really good thing to just um, be able to check your prejudices and biases, to know what triggers you and why it triggers you, and then to do the deep work so that you can let it go and you can, um, you can move on into a greater presence than you've been. One of my favorite quotes is, and I, it's Paul, but I'm not sure where it's from. It's, it's, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, that's a wonderful statement. Be transformed. To be transformed means to be completely changed at death, not on the surface, transformed. How? By renewing your mind, to change your mind, to let the mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you, who, knowing that he was made in the image and likeness of God, thought it not robbery. You see, um, sometimes people come to our a center like this and say, what kind of place is this that you charge for prayer? We don't charge for prayer, we charge for the consciousness, the time it takes to change our minds about whatever you presented to us. And on Sunday we give it completely free so we get a taste. I know that people's lives have been transformed by prayer. You've told me. Okay, back to Raymond. Okay, he, he was a magnificent man and he knew what he knew. And there was no doubt about it. This one is, I determine my own good. And his quote is from Job 22, verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And he says this, the Lord God omnipotent created me as a free and full expression of itself. The Lord God omnipotent created me as a free and full expression of itself. I have the freedom of the mind which brought me, brought me forth to express its ideas. I choose and divine law produces. There is no power to hinder me and no law to refuse me. All of life is mine to use for good, and this I do. Backed up by omnipotence, I determine my own results. I blame no one for my mistakes, not even myself. Let me read that part again. I blame no one for my mistakes, <laughs> not even myself. Really important. I refuse to believe that this world acts, acts upon me for I know that I act upon my world. My thinking is my, is my environment and God is my heredity. I alibi no longer. I face the facts of my own consciousness. I am determined to demonstrate what I want. And he goes on. But you get the idea. Each one of us is empowered to speak from that place of not hoping, not trying, but knowing 
that that power is responding to us, adores us, loves us, has already forgiven us for everything we did that we blamed ourselves for up until now. And from now on, we forgive ourselves. We let go, let go. It's a wonderful day, and the voice of authority is within each one of us, and so it is. So it is. So it is. And please join me in prayer. <clears throat> with love, with gratitude, with pure awareness. I speak this word from a point of power. I know that there is only one life. I know that that life is God's life. I know that that life is the first cause of everything visible and everything invisible. It's the cause of everything. I know that this thing itself is omnipotent. I know that it's omnipresent. I know that it is omniscient. And I know that this divine mind is perfect, unconditioned, and unconditional love. And I unify with it. I am one with it. Everything that's true of the source is true of me. Whether I believe it or not, it's already the truth. And in this holy moment of unification, I know it at a deeper level than ever before. I am enough and that there is enough. I live in a prosperous universe that is forever providing with me the desires of my heart, that which I truly believe, that's which what I truly create. I know for myself that this day is a day of good unfolding, that there is greater and greater good. And I'm not, it's not done to me. I'm part of it. I'm bringing it to me. I'm making it welcome. I'm saying yes to the life that God in me is creating for me. I'm perceiving all of it as good and only good. And I'm saying, yes, my beloved, so knowing that every word I've spoken is for each one of us and all those who tune in, that this gift continues giving. And I simply give great thanks. I'm so deeply and powerfully grateful for the way life works and for the presence of power within me. I'm so deeply grateful. And then I simply release this word I let go I place it in the law of God. It's complete and done. And help me by completing it by saying with me, and so it is. Amen and amen. <coughs> so it is. And now the Jewel Tones Choir. This song is featuring our Jewel Tones Choir. It's a beautiful song from the Wizard of Oz. 